Hey folks, I'm Demotro and welcome back to my combo classroom. We're here on my clock quest, surrounded by all these clocks. It has me thinking a lot about what's called modular arithmetic. But before we go fully into mod 12 and 24 and 60 and all the ones hidden inside clocks, let's just flash over to some tables about even the odds that may be familiar to you. You may remember that any even number plus an odd gives you an odd. Any odd number plus an odd gives you an even. Or with multiplication, even times odd is even, but odd times odd is odd. And these tables hold true for any even or odd number. And they also hold true for something called mod two. So watch as we replace all of these evens with zeros and odds with ones. Now with all the evens as zeros and all the odds as ones, we get the addition and multiplication charts from mod two, the realm of modular arithmetic, where all whole numbers can be described as congruent to zero or one, meaning essentially the remainder they would have if we divided by two, and also meaning the last digit a number would have in base two, binary. And we have these same rules where anything congruent to zero plus something congruent to one gives us one and so on. But we're not as focused on addition for today's episode. We're gonna be looking at some multiplication tables in different realms. And here we just have our good old even or congruent to zero times anything gives us another congruent to zero where the odds congruent to one only times another odd give us another congruent to one. But let's upgrade a little and turn these evens into threevens. Now I've written this as a mod three multiplication chart where numbers are all congruent to zero, one, or two, meaning their remainder after being divided by three or the last digit they would have in base three. But we could also translate it with this little key here to know that the zeros are our threeven numbers, the ones are our post threeven throd numbers, and the twos are our pre threeven throds before the next zero three than one. And we get some more patterns here, kind of like our chart in mod two, but with a little more going on. What about in higher mods? Now I'm gonna jump to mod six, where all numbers are congruent to something between zero and five, once again being like the remainder you'd get if you divided by six, or being like the last digit a number would have in base six and also lining up with all of our nicknames now, where the ones are our post threeven odds, twos are our pre threeven evens, and so on. I love mod six or base six, because we get one of each of these great combos before the cycle flips back around. And the multiplication table's pretty elegant and neat too. We got the numbers going up and then that pattern alternating similar but flipped, reverse, and all of these modular multiplication charts will have a sort of symmetry because 2 times 5 would be the same as 2 times 5. So we're going to see a symmetry across this diagonal axis. And in fact, the numbers that lie in this diagonal line are going to be pretty important. So keep an eye out for the diagonal line as we transition forward to mod 12, similar to a clock. So let's, oh, whoa. This one really took a beating with that last roll. Okay. Now we're skipping past mod 10 to mod 12, partially because we're already used to traits of mod 10 by living in a base 10 society, and partially because mod 10 isn't as neat or interesting as mod 12, and because 12 is what the clocks use. 
The numbers on this diagonal, which I put blue circles around, are the spots we'd encounter if we multiplied a number by itself in this mod. Or in other words, the spots we'd get to if we squared any number in this mod. And if you look at the numbers, this diagonal only contains zeros, ones, fours, and nines. Numbers that came up in the last Clock Quest episode, where I mentioned that if you take any 12 hour clock starting at noon and pick any whole number and add that many hours to the clock that many times, you'll always end up at 12, which really should be written zero on clocks and means zero, one, four, or nine. And in fact, numbers like this that lie on the diagonal of modular tables and are the only numbers that you can hit when you square something in that mod are so important that they have the name quadratic residues of that mod and they come up all over number theory. More technically speaking, a number Q is a quadratic residue of a mod N if there's some integer X that X squared is congruent to, or basically the modular equals to Q in that particular mod. And as these diagonals of this chart are the only possible results when we square one of these numbers, 0, 1, 4, and 9 are the quadratic residues in mod 12. So what about the quadratic residues in some other mods? So here's a list of the quadratic residues in mods 1 through 16. And there's so many cool ways to interpret these patterns we're given. Like this means things like every square number is either 0, 1, or 4 more than a multiple of 5, while also being either 0 or 1 more than a multiple of 4, and all these other things. Or it also means things like if we talked in base 8 numbers, every square number would end in the the digits 0, 1, or 4. And those patterns don't work as neatly in mod 10 because it has a bunch of them, meaning that in base 10, which we count in, square numbers have a much sloppier pattern than if we counted in 12 or a bunch of the others. Now we spent some focus on mod 12 because that relates to good old clocks. Ugh. But what other numbers appear on clocks? We also have 24, the total amount of hours in a day. And we also have 60, all over how many seconds are in a minute and minutes are in an hour. So let's look at the quadratic residues in these mods. Now 24 is actually one of the neater mods in terms of quadratic residues, just has 0, 1, 4, 9, 12, and 16. Meaning if you played a similar game to what we did with the 12 hour clock, where you add a certain amount of hours a certain amount of times, but on a 24 hour clock starting at midnight, you'd always end up at one of those times. And if you played a similar game with minutes or seconds, adding a certain amount of minutes to a clock that started with the hand at zero minutes, out of all of the options you could pick, it would have to end up on one of these amounts of minutes. Or same thing if you played the game with seconds, because 60 is kind of on clocks twice. But I got an even cooler magic trick for you guys. If you take a 24 hour clock and you add an amount of hours that many times like before, but the number you pick is a prime greater than three, you always end up at just one of these possibilities. One AM. Really, any prime greater than three. If you add that many hours to a 24 hour clock starting at midnight, you end up at 1 a.m. And there are ways we could demonstrate this with a big table of 24 by 24, but we can also prove this using a fun fact that showed up in an earlier episode when I was doing a bunch of random proofs about primes. Now, since I've been trying to turn this modular math into fun facts about things like clocks, I also did a little look into mod seven because humans right now count weeks in seven different weekdays. And although the quadratic residues are a little cluttered for that size, 
four different numbers out of seven possibilities, we get something slightly neater with cubes. It turns out any number cubed is congruent to, remember that's like the modular equals, either zero, one, or six in mod seven. And six is sort of like negative one there, one before, one after or the same. Meaning that if you take any cube number and go forward that many days, you will end up on either the same weekday from when you started or just within one weekday before or after. Like if you start on a Sunday and you add any cube number amount of days, you'll always end up on either a Saturday, Sunday or Monday. All right, folks, thank you for joining me here in combo class to learn about some modular arithmetic and how it relates to our clocks and weekdays and other systems of counting and stuff. We'll see these mods pop back in the future. They have a lot more fun to share with us. But for now, hope you have a wonderful day and thank you for coming to combo class.